Howdy, folks. Oh, wow. So I did a lot of work this past month. I made canvas stretcher frames in my wood shop. And uh, some people have been asking me to do the uh, shop tour video, and I'd like to get around to that. But I thought I would start with a video about dust collection and show how my system works here in my wood shop. Because I think dust collection is the most important aspect of a small shop setup. And plus, I, I would like to clean up a little bit. My shop is a bit of a mess. So after I clean up, then I'll do my shop tour. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but anyways, dust collection. Uh, this is my third time setting up a shop. And so this is my third time setting up a dust collection system and hanging pipe and uh, running the machines and doing the work that I do. So I've had some experience with dust collection. Uh, and I started out, like a lot of woodworkers start out, is with no dust collection at all. Uh, and that's how I learned way back in the day. But when I started a business, I set up the shop in a more permanent way. And then hanging the pipe and having a more permanent system uh, is, is really mandatory. Because you don't want to deal with hoses on the floor. And uh, I, I'm not going to change it again because this system works very well. In fact, I'm going to make a very bold statement. I'm going to make a claim that my dust collection system that I designed and built is the most efficient and most practical way to manage sawdust for a small woodworking shop. Now, there's larger shops that can build uh, complicated and well-engineered systems to handle materials and waste materials efficiently and that's a necessary function for you know maximizing your profit because you want to control how much you spend on waste and, uh, and managing that waste but for a small shop there aren't very many solutions available tool manufacturers design dust collectors in a way that kind of works for them so in my old system I had a single stage jet 1.5 horsepower dust collector with the filter bags. I'll show a picture of that here. And uh, I had this dust collector for maybe six years. I, I ran it in the shop and it did all of my dust collection work uh, for both fine dust, table saw dust, planer dust. And it was really difficult to manage for the work that I did. All dust collectors, I think, are flawed in a very similar way. And that is that they, they really don't have that much containment capacity for waste dust. And so they will fill up very quickly, uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, you know, table saws generate a lot of dust, but it's, you know, finer particulates that pack in tighter in the containment. Uh, so I can run the table saw for, say, you know, a couple hours continuously just doing continuous two hour two hours of cutting and that would fill up uh, my my collector bag in my 1.5 horsepower unit if I was doing a lot of heavy planing doing some rough cut lumber uh, even on my little portable 12 inch small planer uh, it would fill up my dust collector in 20 minutes I timed it it takes 20 minutes uh, you know planing boards you know to fill up that bag and then it just starts filling up in the top and becomes stuffed up and then you know then it, I, I have to take the whole thing apart and that creates another dust hazard in the shop uh, but 20 minutes running the planer is not that much time uh, and in a lot of cases I was having to you know stop halfway through my production of planing boards to change my system so that I don't have a clog uh, and that you know that was irritating so my first major tool upgrade was this 20 inch planer and I really really needed this tool because I do so many large tabletops and I, I work with reclaimed wood that requires planing and I work with a lot of rough cut lumber because it's cheaper to, cheaper to buy rough cut lumber so <clears throat> you know I had a 12 inch planer before and I was making uh, tabletops with 14 inch wide planks and I had to take it to somebody else to get it planed and that was costing me money and time so I decided to make the investment to get the 20 inch planer, but I had, I had some uh, complications because it required a five inch port for the dust collector and I only had four inch pipe uh, running my system because that's all my 1.5 horsepower uh, single stage collector could handle. So I bought a new planer 
to handle the jobs that I was doing, but it wasn't enough suction to uh, uh, make it work. So uh, the four inch port did not draw enough airflow in there to collect all the dust as it was being made. And so dust would spill up and this thing would get clogged up. And then when that happened, uh, it didn't even make a clean cut. All those uh, dust chips got jammed up in there. So the toll didn't function. Uh, without proper dust collection. So it was obvious that I needed to upgrade my system. I wasn't planning on doing it because I just needed the planer to get my jobs done. Uh, you know, but then one thing led to another and I needed to upgrade. From a 1.5 collector to a three horsepower blower. And that enabled me to run the six inch pipe. And this is PVC. I, I prefer Schedule 40 PVC for running pipe uh, just because it's uh, maybe a little bit cheaper than metal but I, I like it for a number of reasons and <clears throat> I, I combine it with metal I didn't explain that very well but I had this metal metal piece custom made that was one of my more expensive parts. So that gives me a seven inch, seven inch taper down to a six inch. And then it's got four, four inch outlets that, that reduce. And that gives me like the main branching point of my system. So this, this one goes to my chop saw. And then this one here, this one goes under the shop. Oh, hey, kitty. How are you doing? So I ran part of my piping under the shop here. So it goes under the floor where I'm stepping and over to the table saw right there. And uh, this one goes to my other table saw. I have two table saws here. But I've got a, a six inch main vein that goes all the way from one end of the shop to the other end of the shop and that's where I hang, hang my six inch schedule 40 and that stuff's not cheap it's not actually any cheaper than the metal uh, but I like it because you can just dry fit it together and it doesn't leak and if I need to take my system apart and modify it uh, I just pull it apart uh, it's not glued and you have to take that into account uh, I, I made the mistake of gluing my connections together the first time I did it uh, don't ever do that. <laughs> you don't need to glue your PVC connections because uh, they're uh, almost 100% airtight as, as it is. Uh, unless you're carrying water and liquids in it, uh, there, there's no reason to glue it because you will need to take it apart and modify it, I guarantee you. Kitty, what are you, what are you doing? Are you bored? What do you want? You want to go outside and freeze your tail off? Where was I? <clears throat> oh, if you're using PVC, you have to ground the piping because there, there will be a static charge that builds up on both the inside and the outside of the pipe. And so uh, what I do here, it's very simple to ground it, is I just put these screws that go through it and attach a grounding wire, a bare copper grounding wire to that, and then you know, every two feet I'll just put in another screw, and that's enough to uh, take that charge out of the system. Um, and, and the hoses have to be grounded. Anytime you have a coil hose that's wire reinforced, you have to hook up a ground wire to it to make because these hoses will, will build up a very significant static charge and that's a fire hazard that you, you don't want to encounter so here's my blower which is not obvious if you walk into the wood shop where my dust blower is you can see where the piping ends up but 
at first glance this might not really make sense. I have a filter here which is not hooked up at the moment. This is my backup filter. And the canister filter came from the Grizzly unit that I bought. So I bought a three horsepower Grizzly dust collector, a single stage collector. And then I used that canister retrofitted onto this other container that I built. And this gives me filtering capability if I so choose to filter. And that 8 inch flex pipe hooks up right there. But right now I have the exhaust going right outside. So this is my blower here, hooked up to the wall. And it's got a 7 inch inlet. And the exhaust pipe here is 8 inch. So I've been exhausting my system all winter long. And I've been doing it that way for the past four years. And it works great. So at this point, some people are probably going to be raising the hairy eyebrow as to you know, why I'm just blowing all of my heated shop air outdoors. Um, no kitty. So, it's not conventional to blow your uh, dust collection system outside. Uh, the reason why uh, is, well, two reasons why. Um, one reason is your dust collection system uh, won't work unless you have some kind of source of air bringing fresh air into the shop. Because if you have a hermetically sealed shop, that's airtight, which is what you want to have in the winter time anyways, uh, and you turn your dust collection system that's blowing the air outside, there's no way for fresh air to come in and you're not going to get any airflow. The other reason why you don't want to exhaust your air is because of the heat loss. So not only will your system not work you know, without fresh air coming in, you're also blowing your heated space, your heated air, outdoors uh, and if you're paying for heat that doesn't make any sense at all so you know wh why what am i thinking here why, why does you know why am i saying that my system is efficient when i'm really just blowing my hot air outside <clears throat> so let me try to explain i can get away with exhausting my my dust collection exhaust to the outdoors uh, for a couple of reasons. One reason is that my wood shop is made entirely out of wood. I don't have a piece of drywall in this in this whole structure here. The ceiling is all wood. It's all tongue and groove. The walls are are all wood. You know the floor is all wood. And so uh, you know there's cracks everywhere in, in the system. Uh, and most of those cracks are actually in the, in the attic space because there's no vapor barrier here. On the walls, I have a paper va vapor barrier. And I, I know that because I, I took some of these walls apart. But the ceiling is pretty much open. And there's quite a draft that comes through the, the boards of the ceiling. And so when I turn my dust collection system on and I have all the doors and the windows shut tight in the shop, it pulls air from the attic space that's upstairs. And that's actually a good thing in the winter time, because in the winter time, my heat loss goes straight up. It goes into the attic. And so when my dust collection system goes down, I'm then pulling that heated air back into the shop. So I'm actually recycling the heat in, in, in some way. There is some air that comes in through the cracks of the walls too. There's also some air that comes in through the chimney. And that's another complication that I have to deal with. Um, this is my furnace. This is uh, a relic of the shop here. My antique oil burning furnace. When people come over to service my unit, they usually laugh at me that I still have this thing here. But it, it works great. I mean, it burns hot and it's not really that efficient, but 
it'll heat up the space like in 15 minutes after I turn this on when I need it, but I don't need it usually. I usually don't heat my shop um, <clears throat> in the winter time. The only time I do heat it is when I'm doing assembly work or finish work because I need at least 50 degrees in here to get the glue to dry properly and I need at least that temperature to get paint to dry as well. So I can't do finish work or assembly work in an unheated space. But as far as running the machines, making parts, and doing all the other steps, I don't need to have a heated, heated space. So there's no reason for me to run my heat while I'm cutting uh, my tools. And I don't really want to do that because uh, the air pressure that the dust collector generates uh, we'll actually pull some air out of my chimney and my exhaust vent there. So I'll, I'll get a little bit of that smell coming in. And that's not good. <clears throat> I can run my dust collector system for a few minutes at a time with one of my vents open, one of my, one of my blast gates open, and it doesn't really pull in any exhaust from the furnace. But if I have two blast gates open or I'm doing planing, uh, it, it will pull in a lot of that exhaust. But I can run it for a few minutes at a time. It doesn't affect the furnace. It doesn't affect anything. Uh, but if I have to do continuous cutting, it wouldn't make sense to have the furnace on. All right now in the shop, the sun is out. It's 42.3 degrees in here. And it really won't get any colder in that unless it goes sub-zero. And when it goes sub-zero, I, I do have to run that back up furnace uh, you know because I have another furnace. I'm not worried about my plumbing freezing That's another thing you, you might ask here is like if I'm not running the heat and I have you know the sink over here Am I not concerned about freezing pipes? My answer is no because I have another heater that you don't see at the other end of the shop here I have another heater that I keep at 60 degrees all the time And that's located in the building where the bathroom is and I have a little kitchen area uh, so that's where the majority of my plumbing is, and it's heated all the time. And when that heater's on, I'm not worried about the pipes freezing. So I don't have to heat this space in here, and that's how I get away with this. <clears throat> but uh, this type of system with the exhausting, the dust collection uh, outside is not going to work for everybody. Uh, it only works for my shop because it's so drafty, which is, <laughs> you know, you'd think that would be a huge downfall. Uh, having a drafty shop that costs more to heat, uh, but as far as the way my dust collection system works, uh, it's a, a great benefit. Because if I had drywall over here, I've actually thought about that. I've, I've thought about you know hanging drywall all, all over this place, you know, to increase my heat efficiency. But uh, you know, if that's the case, then you know my dust collection system is not going to work right. Uh, you know the way it has been I actually need those drafts to come in and it, it, it is kind of scary though because <laughs> I mean to think about the airflow that the dust collector generates and when I have all my windows and my doors shut in here and the fact is I can't tell the difference if my if this door is open or if I have a window open and my dust collector system is I can't tell the difference if this door is open or closed because the system works just as good which means it's pulling as much air as it can come through a door it's pulling out through the attic which is kind of scary that it can do that if my building is so you know porous but <laughs> um, but anyways that's that's how I get this to work that's how I manage the heat loss so, but how, how do you put a price on, on heat loss when it's really facilitating the, the health and environment of the workshop? You know, because I don't have to filter if I'm exhausted. I don't have to have this filter on. So I don't have to deal with the filter leaking. I don't have to deal with maintaining the filter, changing the filter. I don't have any sawdust in the shop other than the stuff that falls on the floor here. I don't have to deal with any dust collector residue ever. It's all outside. I only have to go out there once a year and change my system. And that works for me. So the bottom line is this. I would much rather be a little bit chilly in my workspace than have to deal with the hassle of managing a dust collection system 
that's inside my my workspace so uh to to have to empty a system out and maintain a filter and have the potential for dust collection hazards uh due to system overflow uh or system failure because uh, sometimes i've had this happen several times where i change my system and reinstall it and turn it back on and do a bunch of work in the shop but i don't realize that i i didn't connect it properly uh, the seal of the bag uh, did not seat properly uh, on onto the system or the band clamp that came with it uh, you know uh, you know wasn't on there properly and then there's just dust leaking or sometimes the bag just breaks you know you can get punctures that little window can can crack and it cracks several times and I cover it with duct tape but when these punctures happen you don't really know it until your shop is full of dust so like oh you know why is my why, why is it all foggy in here all of a sudden you know after been doing a lot of cutting uh, and you realize that your dust collector has failed <laughs> you know it has it has a mechanical system failure which has been leaking dust continuously without your knowledge because you can't tell right away because it's fine dust that's coming out creating a hazard in your workspace so dust collectors inside your workspace always have the potential to create dust hazards because they can clog up and they can fail uh, my system can fail uh, it's, it's a lot more durable because it's, it's, the containment is, is built out of metal outside. Uh, it, it still can fail, but at least it's outside if it does fail somehow. It hasn't yet. It hasn't leaked at all, so I, I'm pretty confident that it's well built. But, you know, I guess the point is <laughs> having anything inside the space, uh, whether it's uh, a well-built unit or a poorly built unit, uh, with the filter bags, it still has the potential to fail and create a hazard inside your space, no matter what. So that, that's the benefit of exhausting, is I eliminate that potential for hazard. Because <coughs> all my dust is outside, no matter what. So it goes through the wall, and then it's bye-bye for one year. And you know what? I really enjoy that. I enjoy sweeping up my floor and cleaning up all the, all the nasty residue that, that builds up. I, I enjoy cleaning that up. I enjoy sweeping, even if it's just a little bit of dust. I enjoy sweeping it up because I know I'm never going to have to deal with it for one year. I can just like forget about it. And that, that really, it, it really contributes to the quality of, of work life. Yeah, sometimes when I had my old dust collector, I didn't want to sweep my floor. I didn't want to fill it up. I didn't want to have to do all of that because I knew I'd have to maintain it in a, in a fairly short period of time. So I would sweep the floors less frequently, uh, knowing that the maintenance of the dust collector is a hassle. You know, it's something that I discovered after I built my system, you know, uh, that I realized that my my shop, my my wood shop behavior had changed because my dust collector uh, was maintenance free, you know. And because my behavior changed, I felt good about cleaning. I felt good about sweeping, and I would do it more regularly. And my shop was cleaner most of the time. Whereas before, the dust collector itself was generating and emitting dust, creating a hazard, and I was sweeping less frequently because I didn't want to fill it up. Um, Here's what I learned. You know, when dust collection and dust management is a hassle that irritates you, you're not going to do it properly. Uh, you're not going to do it, uh, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, I'm a procrastinator. It's one of my, uh, you know, more serious flaws. You know, especially if it's something that I don't enjoy doing. You know, so certain jobs that come in that I don't particularly like, I, I have a tendency to wait. <laughs> to the last minute and then just blow through it um, but with dust collection you know that's not really a healthy habit uh, it's not a healthy habit to allow your system to become all backed up uh, so that it doesn't work efficiently while you're using the, the machines so it's not sucking up as much dust as it could be if it was working efficiently because you're not maintaining it uh, 
Okay, so I've been rambling on for a while. This is just an introduction to my uh, next video. I'm going to go outside, show you the silo and the dust dumper, and then in my next video I'll make an attempt to try to explain all this stuff. Then I'll do a little picture slideshow of uh, me building the dust collector. This was way back in 2007 uh, or 2008, I can't remember, uh, but it was before I was taking video. So, but I did take some pictures of, you know, some of the building processes along the way so I can show you what was involved with that. And it was actually very involved. I had to renovate my whole building. Uh, you, you can see all this plywood that's on the wall here. That's not original. I put all that plywood up there. So the entire structure underneath was rotted out from about where my chop saw is all the way down to where the oil tank is. So it was about 30 feet, I think, of building that was, was all rotted out and sinking in. So I had to repair that in order to do uh, any more installation work uh, because it was a, a, a fix that needed to take place anyways because if I, if I built my silo, um, I wouldn't be able to do that repair work. So I was kind of, you know, boxed in there. Uh, with having to do a major building renovation and repair so that I could actually build my dust collector. And this all happened because I bought a 20-inch planer. Building my dust collection system actually turned into a, a much bigger expense than I anticipated. Um, the money that I actually spent on the system was, was well invested. The whole thing cost me, you know, probably two or three thousand dollars with all the piping included. So uh, but as far as what you can spend on, uh, you know, say a five horsepower cyclone, uh, it's about the same price. So for, for the amount that I would invest in getting a more uh, industrially designed dust collector from a tool manufacturer, um, I built my own system that works ten times better, that's maintenance free. Um, and it really worked out for me. As far as like the jigs and things that I built in the shop to facilitate production, uh, my dust collection system is, is ranked number one uh, for a good reason, you know, because it's, you know, such a, such a <coughs> because it's, you know, such a benefit, because it's such a benefactory-ish type of thing. 